Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Kwasin here with a discussion about Intel and what is likely the single biggest disaster that they've presided over in years. Maybe even the biggest disaster in their company's history, depending on how this is going to play out. And it is an issue that is affecting the 14 series CPUs and the 13 series CPUs. Now specifically, the issue does seem to affect the i9s more so from Raptor Lake, so the... 14900, the 13900 CPUs, but every single CPU from uh, for the 14 series or 13 series does seem to be affected in some way, shape, or form. Though, for my part, as someone who did just roughly a month ago buy the i7 14700K, I personally don't have this issue, though I am certainly keeping an eye on it. And it is the kind of issue that is killing people's CPUs. Now, this is the kind of thing that happens, right? But I don't think that it has happened on quite such a widespread level as we've seen, especially with i9s. Because generally speaking, when you have like faulty problems with hardware, it's generally, you know, maybe a part of the stockpile, you know, certain models, but you rarely see an entire lineup of models from particular series, just all of them to some degree or another having issues. But what are those issues that we're really talking about? Well, PC Gamer posted this. Dino Survival game developer is switching all of its servers to AMD, which experience a hundred times fewer crashes compared to Intel, because it's only a matter of time before affected CPUs fail. Now, keep in mind, this is server CPU, so that's a bit of a different uh, discussion, but it's been a rocky road so far for some 13th and 14th gen gamers using Intel, because what has been happening, and, and only really kicked up, um, you know, kicked the hornet's nest, so to speak, very recently, is that CPUs from Intel are failing. Your, people are getting crashes. Initially, people were like, oh, it's an NVIDIA issue. Then NVIDIA was like, no, it's not an NVIDIA issue. And then people discovered it's an Intel issue. And we have found the root cause, and Intel says they're going to sort it somewhat. Because there's actually two different problems at stake over here. And one of them can be fixed. The other, other one may not be fixed. However, here's a problem with this. If your CPU is already failing. Regardless of what solution Intel uh, creates, that CPU is already dying. And there's, I, I think, nothing that can be done to really fix that particular problem. And then we have other things to talk about. So this is from Warframe. Now, Warframe just published, the developers of Warframe published a series uh, crash list of various crashes on various models of CPUs. And you can see the 13900K is responsible for 30% of crashes. The 14900K F is responsible for 18% and the 14900K 15%, which um, with a much lower a chance for other models like except the i9. So basically the i9s are responsible for the vast overwhelming number of crashes, though it's not necessarily looking too good for the i7-14700K over there, which is still responsible for 5% of crashes. But there is a world of difference that comes uh, between, you know, 5% and 30%. And it may, and when you're getting crashes, it may be a question of cooling, it may be a question of power, it's certainly a question of power in this particular case, with what Intel has been done, uh, been doing. And then Intel actually posted what they had analyzed. So based on an extensive analysis of Intel Core 13th and 14th gen desktop processors returned to us due to instability issues, so the crashes, we have determined that elevated operating volt voltage is causing instability issues in some. It's not just some, it's quite a lot of them. 
Like it, it's not a small issue, and it's the entire series actually. Like it's the entirety of 13th gen and 14th gen CPUs. And what is happening is that the issue is stemming from a microcode algorithm resulting in incorrect voltage requests to the processor. So basically the processor is asking for too much voltage than what it actually needs. And that is actually killing CPUs. Intel is going to deliver a microcode patch, which addresses the root cause of exposure to elevated voltages and continuing validation to ensure scenarios of instability reported to Intel regarding to its 13th and 14th gen desktop CPUs are addressed. This will come out mid August. You shouldn't be too concerned if you just recently bought a CPU, like my personal CPU is running just fine. I tested it. And by the way, this is a lesson for people. Perhaps one, one lesson people should take from this is when you're buying a CPU, you got to ask yourself, is it good? Is it running in a stable condition? Not what the benchmarks say, you know, put it in your computer, get your cooling, get your power attached, then test it, stress test it, go extreme testing, put it to, uh, put it through uh, the gauntlet in a way that no game, no program will ever do, because that's when you know if your system is stable. There are ways to do that. I'll give you an idea of how to do it. But more importantly, there's another problem. Now, both of these issues, by the way, if your CPU is already experiencing these issues, based on what I've heard, it's unlikely that your CPU is going to be fixed with a patch. You may be able to stop the degradation, but the damage has been done based on what I've heard. And then there is another problem. So there is a problem of oxidation. To explain this, oxygen, you know, rust, basically, corrosion, rust, rusting effectively, right? CPUs and computer hardware in general is made in very sterile conditions. And that also includes, you know, oxygen, like the air, purity, like it's very, very clean. The people working on these things that make CPUs, make GPUs, the fabs, they're in such an environment that they might as well be working on biological weapons, considering the safety measures that are in place over there so they don't contaminate the hardware they're working on. So there is an oxidation issue that affected some quote unquote early core uh, Intel Core 13th gen and desktop, uh, desktop processors. The issue, however, was uh, addressed with the manufacturing process. But that means there are a certain number of 13th gen Intel CPUs that have inherent problems because of manufacturing. And it may be hard to tell in, in initially. Also, uh, apparently, mobile products are not affected in the same way. So if you bought a laptop with a 13th gen or 14th gen CPU, you're not going to have this kind of problem. Basically, we need a microcode update that's coming mid-August. We need BIOS updates, which by the way, when you're, in, when you're updating BIOS, be careful about it. Make sure you do it when your system is stable. So make sure your power is going to stay on because if power goes down when you're updating BIOS, you might lose your motherboard or it's going to be really, really difficult to fix that. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't recommend updating BIOS, at least certainly don't do it casually. But it is something we're going to need to do. The obvious question with their update that they're going to release is, will it lower performance? We don't know. We need to wait for testing to be done once the patch comes out, the microcode patch comes out. But the hope is at the moment, or maybe the cope, if you will, the hope is that when it comes out, it's just going to fix the CPUs require more voltage than they need. And that should be uh, that should not affect performance. All right. But what is was all of this about? Let me just go over the benchmark and explain certain things on this subject. Okay, so here is the benchmark that I use silver bench online. It's an online benchmark that will stress test your CPU. I went for the extreme version, I got the 10,000 score. Now, what you can see over here on the right, you can see the temperature that my cores reached. 
What I found odd from the moment I actually got the CPU and I ran the test to see if it was working properly is that temperature. Like you see some cores in 95, 96, 99, but then you see those cores, those free cores at 100%. I thought it was thermal paste, reapply the three times. After that, I realized, yeah, doesn't matter what the thermal paste is. The cooler is a Dark Rock Probe 5, so that's not an issue. Have enough power in the system. The system has good cooling. All of these things matter, right? There might be an inherent issue with the CPU itself. Like, we know it runs hot. We know it uses a lot of power. But, and those already are issues enough with it. But then you add this issue of voltage. So running stress tests may not actually reveal the issue. The issue, you got to notice what the voltage is when you're using it. Because when you're stress testing a CPU, it will reach the temperature maximum and then it will throttle down. So you expect the, temp the voltage to go down, I I'd imagine so. That's at least what I've noticed running stress tests. But the problem with the CPUs that people have is that that voltage, that VID number that you see over there on the top, that number was not 1.3 or 1.2. 1.3, 1.2 is normal range based on what I've been able to discover. Some spikes at 1.4, though surprisingly not because of the stress test, but because of other programs I've been using. The problem people have had with the Intel CPUs in terms of the failure rate, not the oxidation issue, is the fact that their voltage, the CPU was drawing more voltage than it needed, it was going over 1.5, and not spikes of 1.5, no consistent 1.5 usage. And we're not, and I'm not just talking here about i9s, we're talking here i7s as well. Not sure about the i5s, it seems the fail, like the lower the model, the less the failure rate, probably the limit of voltage on those. But regardless, that is the problem. Now, it's easy enough to tell, get the hardware monitor or look in BIOS, see what voltage your CPU is running or keep hardware monitor online for a you know, up uh, for a couple hours or an entire day or several days. See what voltage you're getting. If you're getting over 1.4 consistently, not just peaks or spikes, if you're getting 1.5 even spikes, then you might have a problem. And that's just the voltage issue, not the oxidation issue. Now, what is the consequence of all of this? Well, it affects both secondhand buyers and first first-hand buyers. Because a lot of people that buy computer hardware in general, they're going to buy it with the assumption, okay, I'll buy this now in a couple of years, I'll replace it, but I'll sell it or give it to someone else, right? That is the assumption a lot of buyers do make, that they'll be able to at least recruit the costs or they'll give it to someone else. But personally, I donate mine. Some of them I give to friends. Some of them I donate to charities, you know, special education students, all that kind of stuff. That's what I do with computer parts that I no longer need. Now, the problem here is that for people who are buying a new CPU, you can no longer soon adapt with the 13th or 14th gen because a lot of secondhand buyers are not going to want to buy a 13th or 14th gen CPU because it's going to be very difficult to test it if it's broken or not, unless you use it for quite a bit. And even then, you don't know if the stability is going to be caused by the CPU or the motherboard or the RAM memory and all that. That's probably why it's taken so long to figure this out. I mean, remember, people thought this might have been an NVIDIA issue. It was not an NVIDIA issue. It's an Intel issue. Okay, so it might be difficult to fi find out. So if you're buying a second-hand 13th gen, 14th gen, you're watching this video later down the line, don't do so because you have no idea, especially once they fix the, fix the voltage issue and the, you get the proper voltage, you won't know. And even if you buy a CPU after this issue has been fixed, 14th gen, for instance, a brand new one, someone who might buy from you, like you will need to prove the, uh, to it, uh, to it, to them that that CPU was built at a particular time. That is a problem, which is going to kill the secondhand market for these CPUs, which in turn is gonna drive down sales for the first-hand market, for the brand new market. This is why this is such a disaster. And on top of that, a lot of people are not gonna trust Intel. This took months and months to figure out. Though I do wonder, 
on that subject. Did it actually take months? I mean, it took months for consumers. It took months for server owners, who, by the way, have no reason to trust Intel at the moment, because for us, replacing a CPU, you know, having a couple of crashes in games, that's our programs is one thing. We can deal with that, right? And there's so many parts. But for servers, where stability is so important, having a failure rate like that, having those crashes, is really a killer for their business. That is a major, major problem because they no longer have trust in Intel. Intel needs to prove them. It's going to take time. So this is really giving ammunition to AMD. Like, I'd say like 80% of AMD's success with the Ryzen series hasn't necessarily come from the product itself. Don't get me wrong, AMD has released a bunch of really good CPUs. And if I wasn't so focused on productivity, I might have bought one. Maybe I should have. But when you're considering the uh, the success of AMD, you got to understand a lot of that has been the failure of Intel from not switching to a different manufacturing node for three millimeter, six millimeter, five millimeter, whatever. You know, just switching the manufacturing node, reducing the size. That was one of the problems. Now we have this issue and it's like, I'm sure Lisa Sue is just popping the champagne when this news, she was just popping the champagne when this news came out because this is going to look really, really good for AMD compared to Intel. Right. Intel makes a lot of money, but this didn't just affect gamers, it affected businesses in a really bad way. We'll see if the solution with the microcode actually works. We'll see if it degrades performance on the CPU by how much it degrades. Now, again, if if it's just fixing an issue with the microcode where it was asking more voltage than it needed, then hopefully it won't reduce performance, but we need to wait and see. So, you know, if you're going to buy a 14th gen CPU, do so at your own risk and understand the consequences of that. Like, if unless you're buying an i9, I wouldn't be too worried about it right now, to be honest with you. But do bear in mind, and it's adding something else that we have to worry about when we're buying new hardware. Because, you know, when, when you buy a computer, you're concerned about a couple of things, right? Thermals, for instance, make sure your computer is cool, make sure it's not too noisy, make sure it's running properly. Ensuring your computer is not take, drawing too much, vol too much voltage than it needs and killing its components is certainly not something I expected that would happen in this dream. Not quite like this, right? Not for something out of the box without overclocking. Just going to mention that. Quasine, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. Stay tuned for more.